CDL exam prep 2022 through 2023, air brake test continued. Number 11, the brake drum does which of the following? A, transfers air from one brake to another. B, stores air after the storage tank is full. C, carries out the action after brake application. Or D, all of the above. The answer is C, carries out the action after brake application. When you apply the brake, the brake drum carries out the action. It is present in all brake systems. You can see it attached to the tires of vehicles. The brakes require the brake drum to stop the vehicle. Number 12. When does the front brake limiting valve become very necessary? A. When driving in summer. B. When driving on a slippery road. C. When avoiding traffic. Or D. None of the above. The answer is B. When driving on a slippery road. This component is properly labeled as normal and slippery to enable better control of it. The pressure that travels to the front brake will be cut in half if you switch to slippery mode. A limiting valve inhibits the front wheel from slipping when driving on slippery roads. If you put the control on normal, it will be able to stop normally. Number 13, the air dryer does which of the following? A, separates particles. B, dries the air. C, needs the air filter component. Or D, all of the above. The answer is, D, all of the above. The air filter and air dryer are complementary. They work on the atmospheric air before it is passed on to the air compressor. The air filter separates dust particles from the atmospheric air. The air dryer removes moisture from the air. Every efficient brake system needs clean and dry air, or else dirt particles will accumulate. Number 14. How many types of air tank draining systems are there? A, two, B, three, C, four, or D, five. The answer is A, two. There are two types of air tank draining valves. The manual draining system and the automatic draining system. If it is a manual draining system, you will have to drain it by 
pulling a cable or turning a dial in a quarter turn direction. The automatic draining system often has in-built electric heaters. Page 91. Number 15. Applying the brake pedal will do which of the following? A. Prevent air from passing into the brake chamber. B. Dislocate the slack adjuster. C. Keep the S cam back. Or D. None of the above. The answer is D, none of the above. None of these answers are correct. The S cam operates when you apply the brake pedal. Applying the brake pedal allows air into the brake chamber and the pressure from the air makes the rod protrude. This affects the slack adjuster, which twists the shaft of the brake cam and rolls the S cam. However, when you let go of the brake pedals, the S cam rolls back and brings the brake shoes back from the brake drum. Number 16. When blank is operating, the brake chamber pushes the wedge in between the rear of the brake shoes. A, the wedge brake. B, the shoe brake. C, the disc brake. Or D, the S cam brake. The answer is A, the wedge brake. The wedge brake works by having the brake chamber push the wedge against the rear brake shoes. Within the brake drums, it pushes them in two. Some wedge brakes have just one brake chamber, while others have two. These brakes operate both manually and automatically. And lastly, number 17. Air brake systems connect the supply pressure gauge to which of the following? A, the air tank. B, the power switch. C, the brake pedal. Or D, the steering wheel. The answer is A, the air tank. With a supply pressure gauge, you can know the exact amount of pressure in the air tank. Air brake systems are designed to link a pressure gauge to the air tank. If it is a double gauge system, then expect a gauge attached to each part of the system. It may even have just one gauge that comes with dual needles.